Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Chick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Chick. This is the beautiful outdoors, and I'm up at Gull Harbor on a walleye mission, solo by myself for today. Might have some people join me in the next couple days. Not 100% sure yet, but I'm going to head out and see if we can put some walleyes topside. I've been fortunate enough to hit some good weather. I should be able to fish outside for the most part. I do have the Eskimo 2800 if I do have to fish inside at all. But like I said, for the most part, I should be able to fish outside. Run and gun is the whole mission. Try to locate some fish and then hopefully even try to locate some bigger fish as well. I love it up here, Gull Harbor. I did some videos recently, I guess probably a fall, not this past fall, the fall before, where Adam and I came up and we did a bunch of cranking for walleyes, put some big ones in the boat, including a gorgeous 12 pounder, and uh, had a beautiful time with my good buddy, Mr. 30. Sadly, he's not here with me to hopefully relive all of that in terms of catching some big ones, but uh, I'm gonna put my first 30 incher on the ice today for you, Adam, Mr. 30, my buddy. Anyways, let's get the sled fired up. And we'll see if we can catch us some walleyes. We have arrived at the first spot. Thankfully, in this northern region that I'm fishing right now of, of Lake Winnipeg, it's not really northern, I guess it's more central, but out of Hecla is, it's mapped by Angler's Edge. So you're not fishing blind. It's quite nice to be able to pick a spot on the map, try it out, you know, you can move around, whatever, as you go, but you're not just going out drilling blind. I know I'm going to drill right now. It's going to be somewhere between probably 22 to 24 feet. So life is, life is good. I'm not going to lie. Having a mapping makes, uh, makes life a lot easier. The goal right now is going to be pop a hole, put the live scope down, find some fish. I'm not going to pull out my main camera and a bunch of other stuff until I actually locate some fish and catch them. First, we're going to locate some fish, catch one or two, and then we'll get the, the big main camera out as well. I like to put my auger right on the ski right there. That way it stays out of the snow. Nothing freezes up in the handle. It's a good place for it, right on your ski. Oh. Come here. Come on, turn up, turn up. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, what a light bite. Wow. That fish was not aggressive. But we're on the board. We're on the board with the walleye. Pretty sure it's a walleye anyway. Looks like a walleye on the live scope. I don't think it's like tiny. It's not huge, but oh boy. That's maybe a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. Oh, nice. Okay, that is a fat, fat greenback. Look at that hook right in the top, like hardly. Okay, guess we'll get out the um, the main camera. It's about a 22 inch. Look how long their nose is. I feel, I feel like even though it's a walleye, I know they're called greenbacks because they have this light, light shimmer to them here. They just seem so different to me. I don't know. Nice. Okay, well, I guess uh, there's some fish here. I saw some smaller ones before I caught that one. I saw another one about that size, maybe a little bit bigger. So I think I will pop out my main camera as well. And we'll stick out here for a little bit. We are dropping back down. Camera's going. I've got the bump board pliers here too, ready to go as well. 
just in case we got one worth measuring. Actually, even that last one, I would have liked to measure just to kind of see where I'm at, but that was probably like a 22, 23 inch or something like that. I went to a small little spoon right now, a cast master. That one was actually caught on a jig and a mena. That was a, a quarter ounce Kalen's Google Eye jig with the long shank and a, a salted minnow. Thought I'd just try a little jigging spoon as well and uh, see what happens. That was a, a very, very light bite, like so light. Thankfully I had a sharp hook to like actually penetrate because while I do have a really, really tough mouth and if they have a really light bite like that, it's sometimes it's hard to send it home. Another fish here on the bottom. There's definitely some smaller fish kicking around. Like I said, that was one of the nicer marks I've seen so far. Lots of little, ones with little marks where they could be uh, little ciscos, could be perch, could be little walleye, but we'll see what happens. We'll stick it out here for a little bit anyway and see if we can catch some more walleye. Even though I'm fairly mobile, as you know, it's a lot harder to move around ice fishing, period. The less you can move around, the better chance you have, I feel like, with stacking a bunch of numbers. These fish are moving constantly, so it's not like I'm going to like just drill and land on a school of fish, I feel like. I feel like these ones are, these fish are moving pretty steady. So sometimes it's better to move around and sometimes it's better to stay put, obviously. It all depends. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, it's smaller. It's smaller, maybe like an eater. Maybe like an eater size, which is good. One of these days I'm gonna cook some fish on the ice. Not today, today we're having pulled pork sandwich, but another day we'll be definitely having some walleye on the ice. That thing was a little bit more aggressive. It hit it a lot harder, but that'd be almost a, a good eater. Little, little small. Walleye number two. Even though it's nice outside right now, it's not like it's on crazy nice. There's cloud cover and there's wind. So it's not like it, it is if it's no wind and sunny. But where I'm getting at with this is that I'm staring at my shelter and I'm like, you know, if I catch some fish here and I'm going to be here all day, I think at some point I'm going to set up the shelter and hang out inside where it's nice and comfy. Not that I'm not comfy right now, but I, I don't have a chair. I could use that obviously, I could set that up too. But if I do find a spot where I'm gonna hang out for a bit, I'll probably pop up the shelter and hang out inside of it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I want to hit it hard, aggressive, aggressive fish that one was. I like to see that. Hopefully we'll get a, a little bit of an aggressive bite here. It's probably a, a in between of the first one I caught and the last one I caught. Oh, come here, come here, turn yourself around. I don't think you can turn yourself around, can you? I think I can grab you. Once they get in the hole and if they're not too small, they can't turn themselves around, but you can give them a push with your hand though and get them turned around quite easily. <laughs> this is painful. Okay, we got them. Just curious to see, cause it's smaller than the first one I caught and that's 22. So it's smaller than the first one I caught and this one's 22 inches. This would be a little bit too big to keep to eat, but not big enough for one of them trophies. Oakley dokley. Things are good. One more fish of that caliber. And I'm gonna pop up the shelter. The wind's picking up, so it's like, it's not cold, but it's got just a little bit of bite. Oh, I should probably shut my phone off too. I got cell phone service. Well, what, what better spot than this? There's fish, there's cell phone service, and there's gonna be lunch. Pulled pork sandwiches today, I think, is the plan. Or maybe I brought burnt ends, I can't remember. We're all one of the two though. We're gonna boil up some big smoke barbecue at some point in the shelter. I feel the shelter's definitely coming up at some point though, for sure. How many times can I say some point? At some point today, we're gonna have a good day. We're already having a good day. It's a good day. It looks like the sun might come out a little bit here. Clouds are breaking. 
So I think what I'm going to actually do before I pop up the shelter is I'm going to cook lunch outside here. The wind's backed off just a little, little bit. And like I said, it's getting brighter out here. Clouds are, are breaking, which could change a lot for the fishing too, in better or worse sometimes. So I think before I set up the shelter, I'll have lunch first. And if it's like, doesn't really get crazy by the time I'm done lunch, I'll maybe try a different location. The one thing I wanted to be mobile today, be able to move around and try some different spots. Come on, come here, come on. Oh, it's small, it's small. It's either a sauger or a perch, I bet. It's tiny, it's tiny. It is a sauger, a very, very light colored sauger. Well, those guys don't count for anything. They count for a sauger and that's about it. Didn't get my bait though. Aha! Didn't get my bait. Up, rise, rise, rise. Come on. Little eater. I want at least rose up off the bottom. I've had some fish come by, deny me completely. Small little sauger. Like I said, saugers don't count. Better than nothing, right? Won't complain. It's a sauger. It's a sauger. My lunch should almost be ready. We're gonna have that and I might check a, a different area then, unless this fires up in the next half an hour. I'll probably try a new location. That's what's so nice about this area. There's so many spots to try, I feel like, with the mapping and there's hardly anybody up here fishing, which is mind blowing compared to the south end of Winnipeg. I'm sure there's just as big a fish up here to be caught. You just have to put some time in to find them. Lunch time. This is what's for lunch. Big smoke, barbecue, pulled pork. I brought some buns to have with it, but I forgot my barbecue sauce or anything like that. So I might just eat the pork just like that because I know the flavor is really, really good. You don't have to put barbecue sauce on it. I've had it before where you didn't eat it. The barbecue sauce was good. The barbecue sauce just adds a little bit of flavor for when you make like a pulled pork sandwich or something. But the cooker is just finishing here. I think I'm losing my propane. It looks like the water start stopping, stopping boiling as much as it was. So I'm thinking I'm probably low on propane, but we're gonna put the pulled pork into a nice little tin foil container. I was smart and brought tin foil container so I can take the leftovers home with me for tonight, but lunchtime. And I think we're going to try a new spot after lunch, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. The fish just must have known that I was gonna have some lunch. Oh, another one down there too with this one. Some fish are showing up. Maybe I'll get a midday bite and I'll be sticking around after all. This one's got a, a big head, big head, small body. It'd be a good eater though, right there. It's a good thing it's not tomorrow. You would have been fish tacos. Like I said, just stuffing my face full of some pulled pork and boom, fish. Life is good. Well, I finished lunch. I think it's time to, to look around. I'm catching some fish here, but part of the, or one of the biggest reasons I came up here was to look around and explore a little bit and see some, see some different water. And I told myself if I got into something that was hot and heavy, I'd stick around, but I haven't popped up the shelter yet. So let's go try a new spot. That's part of it right now. It's nice enough. When it is nice out, it's a good time to explore around a little bit. And when it's not nice out, that's when you pop up the shelter and really hunker down and fish that one spot out really well, right? Like you just put a full day in there and see what happens. I could leave here and a big pot of fish could cruise through in the next 20 minutes and I could miss the whole bite and I could move somewhere where there's no fish at all. It's a chance you take. But that being said, I'm all about taking some chances, some risks. I love the adventure. So let's head to the next spot. <laughs> Okay, record on the big camera. I really need to clean that screen, I think. Another spot, we're gonna give this area, I don't know, 20 minutes, half hour. If there's uh, nothing, we'll keep moving. I thought about 
just going and drilling and looking, but these fish are moving so much. It's not like they're on structure where I'm like seeing fish and they're all hanging out there and I can go there and drop on top of them. So I feel like going around and just looking to see if you see any fish isn't the right answer. At the same time, obviously you find a pot of fish somewhere in the area. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm making things up as I go. It feels like right now, that's for sure. But I'm going to give it like 20 minutes, half hour if I don't see any fish. And if I see fish, obviously it keeps me there longer and longer. I feel like I could have stayed where I was and probably caught like 15 fish by the end of the day if I just toughed it out, right? Because I got five or six already. But I'm just looking for the greener pastures, right? To see what else is out there. But I can put that spot on one of my, on my, or I can make a waypoint there and be like, okay, this is obviously an area that will hold fish at some point. They'll travel through here. And you create yourself like a little milk run. And the more GPS waypoints you have, the bigger your milk run gets and the more efficient you can be when you head out fishing for the day. Because if there's nothing in one spot, oh, we'll go to another spot that we fished before. We'll go to another spot that we fished before. I think the biggest thing I can say with something like that is this, this pertains more to the summer than the winter for sure. But every time you go out, check a new spot. Hit some of your milk run spots, but check a new spot and add it to your repertoire. That's how much faster you're able to learn if you're always checking a new spot. If you just go to one spot and anchor down and sit there all day with a jig and a minnow or pull a worm harness or something like that, you're never gonna learn anything new. So it pays to always add a new spot to your repertoire or your milk run every time you go out. Biggest thing I'd say too with new spots is if you don't see any fish, move quicker. But if you don't see any new, see any fish at a spot that you've never, or that you have fished before, that's when you tend to hang out there a little bit longer. Is this your milk run spot? Or is this your no fish spot? Oh, oh boy. A fish just shot straight up. Probably a sauger. Probably a sauger. Yep. Sauger. Well, it swims, but it's not what we're after right now. At least they pass, a t pass the time between the walleyes. That's a little sauger. Another little sauger. Another sauger. Well, the saugers are aggressive at this spot. No, that's a little greenback. <laughs> that's a little walleye. Well, this is a little walleye that identifies as a sauger. Oh boy, <laughs> look at this fish, aggressive. <laughs> sauger, I think it's sauger. I've caught four fish here pretty quick, but they're all smaller, yeah, sauger. So two small walleye and two saugers. So even though I'm catching some fish here, not really the best size. So what I'll probably do is fish for another 15 minutes or so and if I don't catch a, a nicer one then I'll make a move again and we'll just we'll keep moving the goal would be to find some kind of area where I could pop up the shelter but at the same time I'm probably past the coldest part of the day even the wind doesn't have that much bite now as you can tell I'm fishing in uh, without gloves with bare hands so it's not bad out here at all what a beautiful area I've met some really nice people I just had a nice guy with either girlfriend or wife, I'm not I'm not sure, they stopped by to say, say hi. And he was a little bit cautious to say hi because I was filming and I'm like, no, just come over, right? Like, I'll always take time for the people that want to stop by and say hi. Do I want to sit there for an hour and chat? No, obviously I can't because I am trying to film and work. But at the same time, I'll always take time to chat with viewers or people that know who I am just for the fact that if it wasn't for you guys watching the videos, I couldn't be up filming in places like this, just enjoying myself and literally living my best life. So don't ever hesitate to say hi. Doesn't matter if I'm in the middle of a meal at a restaurant to anything like that. I don't, I don't care. I'll always take time to say hi to Anybody that's a follower or a viewer, I appreciate it more than you can imagine. Skidoo is running, packed up, somewhat packed up. I've got it where it can be really mobile right now with putting the live scope inside and I just don't shut the case all the way. It works good, but we're going to spot number three. We're gonna keep on trucking. It's about three o'clock, I've only caught. Well, I just caught four fish here. I think about 10 fish total for the day. 
nothing crazy though but we're going to keep on moving try to uh, locate some snapping walleyes i haven't found a good pot of fish yet which is obviously one of the goals okay another spot i don't have the camera out or i'm not recording on live scope yet as soon as i see one fish i will get that out oh Oh, come on. Come on. Okay. Oh, well, good sign. This means I'll be able to get the camera out. It's definitely a walleye. It's not a sauger. It's a walleye. It's a greenback. The old greenback. The old Lake Winnipeg greenbacks. Okay, not bad. Probably about a 22 incher. <laughs> he tried. I tried to jump out of my hands okay we'll get the live scope recording and we'll get the main camera out and hopefully we uh can score at this spot dropping down really shows you the power of the mapping in my opinion if you can have an area mapped out i'm so looking forward to the summer to exploring some new bodies of water creating my own maps and and showing you guys how i Pick, a pot, pick apart spots. But so far today, walls I've used is the Angler's Edge map like I talked about earlier. And now I'm on a shoreline spot here. Uh, I'm in 26 feet of water and it's like deep water this way. And of course, shallow water towards the shore. It's like that first big break line, basically. So I say a burst, the first like big break line is like that first really hard, hard drop where it literally comes from like two feet all the way down to like 30 feet here and then kind of plateaus for a little bit. And I'm just kind of on the edge of that drop. And the morning, the first two spots I fished were points. Well, one was in the morning, one was in the afternoon. There were points. And again, all it was was just off of that first break line off of a point. One was on an island. I think one was on mainland, I think. But it just shows you the power of the mapping, like stuff that looks good. I'll put a couple spots here. I'll flash them up here, a couple X's or some arrows. I, I like the arrows. I'll use the arrows of like some spots that I would key in on in terms of picking apart a lake that is mapped. Anyways, still kind of all over the place. I'm just having a great day. My hamster is spinning and spinning and spinning. And uh, yeah, and I'm just fishing and fishing and fishing. I keep jigging and jigging and jigging. We're having a good day. I think the two biggest fish I've caught today is not even when I've had the main camera out, probably. I've got three nice ones over 22 inches. Biggest, that first one was probably like 23, 24 inches. And then some smaller ones, but I'm probably over a dozen fish. Oh, little, this is like small, some of these small ones just like shoot straight up other little saugers or little walleyes but just like right here it's windy and then boom i don't even i don't even try that hard to catch these ones to be honest oh and he's gone perfect that's okay that's okay i didn't they didn't really try that hard at all because all they do is kind of wreck the minnow i gotta put a fresh minnow on here i'll show you kind of how i rig the the minnows on a, a jig i get asked this quite a bit in terms of how i rig the minnow but this is a long shank Kalen's Google Eye Jig, quarter ounce. What I do to rig them is I come through the eyeball like this, right through the eye, through it. And I take it and I feed it all the way up to that bait catcher there. I turn it around and I'll kind of look where it's gonna come through. I'll line it up and just like that. That's how I like to rig my minnows, sideways. I rig them sideways. If a fish gets close enough to know that the minnow's sideways, plus a dying minnow, in the water which is what you're kind of in, like uh imitating as like a minnow that's struggling lots of times would kind of be swimming sideways because they're disorientated and they don't know what's going on but that's the way i like to rig them i find they stay on really good like that and uh yeah but rigging them for a long time like that it won't be the only way i'll do it but the majority of the time that's why i like to rig my a jig in a minna oh come on little guy is it a sauger or a walleye though? I kind of want to see. Well, no, it's an eater walleye. I didn't take that guy too serious and I probably, whoa. <laughs> nice release Clayton, beautiful. Nice work. 
I guess I going to say I didn't take that one too serious and he ended up being a little bit bigger than I thought. I might, thought he might have been just a sauger to be honest with you. And uh, yeah, and it'll be a perfect eater walleye. He's lucky for sure that I'm not having fish tacos today. Well, I think right away, I'm not going to set up my shelter, but I think I am going to swing it over here and use the seat though. It's a lot just to kneel all day today. I've been standing, kneeling, and of course sitting when I've been driving locations on the snowmobile. But I'm thinking that uh, seat might be pretty good soon. Oh, high flyer, high flyers, smaller ones. Oh, it's on the bottom there. There's a sauger. There might be a walleye here too, maybe. Not this one, I don't want that one. This one, ah, they're both pretty small. Bottom one's definitely bigger than the first one though. But it's not much bigger. It's not much bigger than the other one. <laughs> Saugers. Well, we're gonna go try one more spot. Three spots. I've caught fish at every spot. Just there's like, nothing's been crazy where it's like I'm seeing fish come through steady. It's just a couple. So there's lots of saugers around, like smaller ones for sure. I keep pulling away from a lot of those ones, but I haven't seen a pile of like decent sized walleye marks at all. I, I've caught definitely the biggest ones I've seen today. So that's encouraging. It's just a matter of getting on a pot of them, I guess, but I'm gonna make my fourth move for the day, probably my last. I think one of the guides from Gull Harbor is gonna come out and join me for the last little bit, the hour of the day. He just said he wanted to fish and hang out a little bit. And I says, you know what? Today is probably a great day to do it because it's nice, we can fish outside. I'll still keep fi filming. If he pops a great big one, I'll run over with the camera. But if not, uh, yeah. And that I guess I should note, there is options here to go guide it. It doesn't have to be just do it yourself like I am right now. They actually even have snow bears there. Two of them, you can rent a guided option with a snow bear. Uh, I don't know if they have guided options without the snow bear or not, but they do have guides there. It's just a wonderful little place. And later I'll go get a meal. I'm probably going to just uh, do a takeout from the restaurant tonight, I think, and take it back to my room so I can dump all this footage and charge camera batteries and all that stuff. But they have a beautiful restaurant there with some of the best food around. It's so good. They have walleye tacos, it's, <laughs> which I'm gonna have tomorrow. So I'll refrain from having walleye tacos tonight. But anyways, let's pack up the sled and try one more spot. Okay, end of the day or last spot. I'm going to enjoy myself and sit down for this one. I've worked hard today. It's been fun. Definitely been fun. It's so much nicer to ice fish when the weather's nice outside. It just makes life so much easier. It's slower here. I just moved here about 20 minutes ago. Little guy. Well, I think Drake is good luck. Drake shows up, drills right beside me here, hangs out, and I catch an eater. First fish at this spot. So now in four spots, four different spots, I've successfully caught fish at each spot. Easy. That's what makes me a good fishing guide is everybody around me usually catches fish and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that perfect fish taco fish right there. See ya. Well, I'm back at the cabin. I've got some food to go so I can eat and dump all the footage from today. Uh, it wasn't a crazy day of fishing. I had to work really, really hard. It feels like that's kind of been the theme of this whole winter in general is just working really hard for the bites, but that's part of it. More than anything, I'm learning stuff out there, which I enjoy. And today, hopefully you could take something away from this video. <laughs> no idea what it was because I was all over the map, I'm sure. But this, that was day one. I still have a couple more days here at beautiful Gull Harbor. I'll probably show off the restaurant at some point in there. I have a beautiful, beautiful restaurant and I'll do some tour of the inside uh, of the place I'm staying at here too. They have a couple different style of rooms they have. 
They have a duplex, they have a fourplex, they have single hotel rooms, and then they have a cabin as well. But it's kind of nice right now. I get back nice and late. I don't have to cook anything. I can order from their restaurant because they're open till eight every night. So it's a good day. I'm not gonna lie, it was enjoyable. I appreciate everybody for watching this video. And uh, until next time, don't forget, get outside.